The following is a special multimedia presentation from NorthJerseySports.com. Brought to you by the Bergen County Education Association. Bergen County Public Schools work because the BCEA works with you. It's hockey night again. NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series talking all things North Jersey hockey. This is season one, episode seven, as we continue our barrage of hockey talk here on NorthJerseySports.com. I am Corey Doviak, being joined by my co-hosts, Fairlawn Athletic Director Corey Robinson. What's going on, Corey? Uh, everything's good. Getting a little shoveling action in out there, and uh, we got a little delay in the Bergen County tournament championship game. We're going to go to uh, from Wednesday. We're going to go. 24 hours later, and we're going to go 7 o'clock on Thursday night. And the winner of that game will be the uh, county champ. So it should be a great game. Yes, and not only is It's Hockey Night your official source for North Jersey ice hockey entertainment, but we also hand out pertinent information, as that is a great way to start the show, letting everybody know that the Bergen County Final has been moved one day to Thursday at the Ice Walt with a 7 p.m. face-off. And also joining us here tonight is Mawa Head hockey coach, the Maven, Kevin Sabella. What's up, Kev? Not much. Not much. Drying off the dog, buried in the snow. <laughs> Watch, come inside, see the Rangers lose to their, uh, my hated Islanders, or the hated Islanders, I should say. So, uh, But anyway, ready for uh, ready for a nice game on Thursday night. I think you're going to see two great teams. Yes, and we will talk about it. Let's set up the show for this evening. Uh, in the last edition, which is currently running on North Jersey Sports, we had Bob Toy, the Ramsey head coach. Tonight we will have his counterpart, Don Bosco Prep head coach Greg Toscos will join us. The Ironmen are the two-time defending Bergen County champions, the only champions that the tournament has ever known. So it will be interesting to get his thoughts on where his team stands going into the final. And we will also have an interview with our Player of the Week we seem to have a West Milford heavy theme going on here on its hockey night, but how could you not when they went out and from the number four seed won the Passaic County tournament? Our player of the week is Ross Mantione, their senior goalkeeper and captain. So we will do a player of the week segment coming up shortly here. But I think we should start the show and we'll keep the front of it quick. But, you know, Kevin and Corey, I don't know which one of you want to take this first, but let's talk about this Bergen County final. Ramsey versus the non-public in Ramsey in Don Bosco Prep. Uh, it, it, I, I, I'm going to ask it. I know the answer to your question, but does Ramsey have a shot here? Go ahead, Go ahead. All right. right. I'm going to let you play. Yeah, let, well, let, let Kevin do a tap dance first. Yeah, I'll, 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 keep it, I'll keep it simple for you. No question. No question about it. Ramsey has a chance in this game. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I work there, but they definitely have a chance in this game. They're very deep. Good goaltending. Bob Toy is one of the better coaches around. He'll certainly have his team ready to go. And I, I think they've really been chomping at this. I, I really do. You know, I know they picked them up early in the year of scrimmage. They got, you know, got their feet wet. I think they got some of that emotion out, even though it's early. Um, so they're certainly not going to be intimidated by them. Um, they've played some big games, obviously, in the holiday tournament, some big games in league. But you know, you, you, you're getting, you're certainly getting a different, uh, a different foe here in Don Bosco. But um, you know, Rams got one of the. Just speaking line wise, um, they got one of the top lines, not only in in the, in the county, but I, I certainly believe in the state they could skate with anybody. Um, and they have the depth. They have the depth that that that's going to take to uh, to keep up with a fast paced Don Bosco team. And I, you know, I'm looking at a one two goal game. I, I really think so. I I really truly believe that unless one team lets its emotions get out of control that could be the only really determining factor but I think you know like I said I think both teams are well coached I think they're going to be under control for the most part I think that first five minutes is very important and then from there it's going to be who takes advantage of the opportunities who makes a mistake here or there who gets the big save and uh and uh the place is going to be uh it's going to be electric Yes, and keeping the maximum number of players out on the ice for long stretches is key, too. I mean, penalties could change the whole situation wow. there, not only for what it does on the power play, but also the toll it takes on the legs of those who have to kill it off. No question about it. No, I, you know, neither team can afford that. Um, you know, I, just personally speaking with Ramsey, their power play is deadly. I mean, you give them power play, 
um, you know, they're going to hurt you. You know, I don't care who they're playing. So I'm sure Don Bosco knows that. Uh, obviously, you know, Coach Toscos, uh will probably talk about that. But, um, yeah, if you give them either team, if you give them a man advantage, you know, that you're certainly uh, certainly under the gun. Right, Mr. Robinson? It's, uh, you know, I don't know how I could follow up on that. You said it yeah, all right there. Yeah, that was some type of analysis. That, that, that was analysis. Uh, you know, I, I hope Mr. Fishler was listening to that one because uh, <laughs> the Maven, May, our Maven, really had uh, broke that down well. I, I, I see it. I see it being a really, you know, really interesting game. I, I think, um, you know, after seeing the teams probably three or four times each this year, I think Ramsey has done everything they possibly could do so far. I mean, they lost one game to Randolph, which, you know, if you watch the game, and you, know, you, you don't come away from that game thinking that Ramsey's not as good as Randolph, if not better. Um, you know, the Del Barton-Bosco game I looked at, and I, and I really thought that Bosco, for, you know, maybe 17, 18 minutes of that game, dominated Del Barton. Not, not outplayed him, but dominated the game. And didn't score, obviously, so that was the problem. But they did dominate territorially, and I, you know, I'd want to see how Ramsey's going to react to the to the the four check that Don Bosco is going to throw at them. And Ramsey has a very good defenseman. They move the puck well. Their forwards are good, and it's going to be, you know, just look at the football matchup we got in two weeks: the uh, Seahawks and Broncos. You know, Manning against the the, the the Seattle defense. It's kind of you know contrast and style. But I, I want to see. I think that's going to be the, the part of the game that I'm going to look at the most: the so Ramsey trying to get their puck moving out of the zone against the Bosco forecheck. And if they can do that, then that's going to open up opportunities for them. And you know, it'll be interesting. You know, they're they're the underdog, no question about it. Ramsey's the underdog. Can can they hang in there with them and stay there? I believe they probably can. You know where, you know where they take it from. You know how they approach it after the first period if they're there. That, that's going to be an interesting thing. But uh, you know, I agree with Kevin. I do think they they have a chance in the game. No doubt about it. That was a lot of talking just to agree with Kevin. Yeah, trying, trying to, to break it down. Trying to break it down. <laughs> <laughs> and an outstanding job you did here. I should mention that also. We will do our updated top ten rankings of North Jersey high school hockey teams and at the end of the show we will also release the latest edition of the great eights our two experts take on nhl rankings all right well let's welcome in our first guest of the evening he is don bosco prep head coach greg toscos his team looking for a third straight bergen county tournament champion the only champion that the bergen county tournament has ever known and coach thanks for joining us here on hockey night Thanks. Uh, good evening on this snowy uh, Tuesday night. Yeah, it really, it's hockey night. I mean, it's snowing, you know, people can't get to the rink. It just feels right to do this uh, kind of show tonight and talking about your team here. You know, let's talk a little bit about the run to the final. I mean, you guys, you, you ran, you know, a hot goaltender at Bergen Catholic. You found a way through that, which is key, and now... Uh, an intra-town rival with Ramsey coming up in the final. Just give us a, a state of the state on Don Bosco prep Ironman hockey. Yeah, so so after a, a slow start, and I don't mean hockey-wise, I just mean game-wise, we're finally picking up the volume of games that we're playing. So uh, the last two weeks we, we've uh, had four or so games and, and pushed ourselves a little bit, to be honest with you. Uh, Bergen Catholic, obviously a, a rival. We talked about that on the last... Last time we were on the show, and uh, Anzavino is a hell of a goalie. I mean, he played fantastic. He's 50-some-odd saves in net there and, and really kept them in the game. And, you know, it's it's one of those big rivalry games like we talked about, but it's, but it's good to get past them. And then uh, we followed that up with a trip up to Fairfield Prep to play the defending state champs uh, uh, up there and uh, the following day, actually. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, what a way to decompress from a Bergen County uh, semifinal than to get on a bus the next day and head up to a defending Connecticut state champion. Yeah, I mean, three games in four nights as well. So it, it pushed our guys a little bit. We were shorthanded, actually. We, we were missing six guys off the roster for various different reasons. Uh, a couple guys were up in an all-star game that uh, was scouted pretty much by every NHL team and all about 25 colleges. So it was a, a, an opportunity to get themselves showcased. So shorthanded, uh, I absolutely loved the effort the guys put in. I mean, 
a two-two tie against the top team in Connecticut or one of the top teams in Connecticut, and uh, we battled, we grinded. We had an all freshman line that was only playing their second varsity game. Each guy was only playing their second varsity game. They scored the first goal for us, which got everybody up. And and it, and uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, out of the six guys on the ice, five of them were freshmen for that goal, including the goalie. So uh, we, we were all really excited about that. And and they battled. It's a tough place up there. They're very much like Del Barton. They're big, strong, physical, and fast. Just uh, well, Corey, go ahead. I got a couple more questions, but uh, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. Here. Coach, obviously, it's uh, an interesting matchup when a when a two and a one get together in a you know county state final, whatever it may be. This obviously has a little bit of a unique feeling to it because it's you know the two schools from within the same town. Um, you haven't played them in a while, as far as you know, a meaningful game. This is uh, something that I, you know, that there, there was a buzz around the rink the other night during the semifinal games about this matchup. Uh, you know, how, how are the guys looking forward to this? What, what's the talk in the locker room? And, you know, what, what, what are the feelings going in? Sure, Corey. I think it really comes down to the fact that we respect Ramsey so much because we are so close to them. We practice on the uh, opposite rink at the same time they practice. A lot of our guys play on the same team together. Uh, or in the same organization, so there's so much familiarity with each other that um, that 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 builds the excitement for sure. But there's so much respect that we have for them. I mean, I think I think Ramsey's the top team in the state, the top public team in the state, and and can compete with the top teams in the state for sure. Um, and uh, it just it does build. Uh, I mean, I think the Star Ledger has us three and them six in the state, so you've got two of the top five teams in the state, if you want to call it that, uh, playing against each other in our home rank, both both teams' home rank, in front of uh, you know fans from the same town. It's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, it is crazy. Go ahead, Maven. Um, Greg, what impre- more specifically with Ramsey, what, what impresses you uh, with them? Obviously, they got some big-time scores. They got that first line. They got a good goalie. But um, besides that, <laughs> what, what, uh, <laughs> what, what impresses you uh, most about them? Other than that, um, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the play? <laughs> well, I, I will say that Ramsey is by far the best dressed staff in the entire state. They look true, sharp on true. the pitch. Okay, uh, but uh, look, they are extremely well coached. Bob Toy knows what he's doing. The entire staff; those are real professional hockey coaches. I mean, they they understand the game and they teach the game real well. So that's first and foremost. Which means, you know, we have to our staff has to up our game and make sure that our guys are prepared. Second. You, you talked about the forwards up front. I mean, Whalen, Whalen is a phenomenal hockey player, and every time he's on the ice, he's literally making something happen. But Nick Botta, you know, Connor Di Tomaso, and they've got other great players that we have to be aware of every time they're on the ice. And that line is no different than playing against Del Barton or playing against BC High. I mean, they're that good. Uh, and, and, you know, defense is strong. Jimmy Hunt's back there. they got guys that are physical defensemen that can play with our guys um, and and we're going to have to work hard to beat them down low on uh, on their D. And and Harmon is as good as they come. He's a strong goaltender. He's a good goaltender. If you look at his record and his goals against average, it's fantastic. Right. So uh, when I look at Ramsey, I say that their their top five can compete with any top five in the state. And what makes Ramsey different than maybe some other publics is they are deep. They've got other. They've got a second line and a third line that's contributing night in and night out for for Coach Doy. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, we had Coach Toy on the show last night, and we were talking. But one of the questions I asked him was about, you know, for him, it, it might be a matter of dialing it back a little bit. I mean, you know, his kids are going to be chomping at the bit, uh, you know, in town rival, public versus non-public, all of the stuff that goes on there. And they've, you know, obviously Don Bosco Prep is circle, circled on everybody's schedule, no matter what time of year you're going to play them, but you know, add a county final to that, and it, it just gets turned up the greater notch. You, on the other hand, your team has you, – you've taken them so many different places. You know, you, you've played big games in different venues. You know, it, is intensity not, not going to be a problem for you? I know your kid's going to be up for a Bergen County tournament final, but I think a Bergen County tournament final might mean something different for the Ramsey kids than your kids. Have you given any specific – you know, are you going to pay any specific attention to that, or do you expect them just to come out flying like no, – you know, Corey – yeah, Corey, the answer is no to that. I'll tell you why, right? Uh, and Coach Toy and I had a conversation about this earlier today because I said, look, in the end, Bob, 15 years from now when these kids 
go back to Bosco or they go back to Ramsey High School, wherever, whoever wins this game, or, or the guys that won from Bosco last year and the year before, they go back into that gym. They're going to look up, and they're going to see football and all the state champions and the county champions and basketball and county champions and baseball and all these other things. They're going to look up, and they're going to see county champs in hockey. Right. They're going to see that for 2011, or, or sorry, 2012 and 2013. And, and whether we see it in 2014, who knows? The game will be in, in two days. But it means just as much to them because I think after we talk about that and the fact that you don't necessarily walk into your rink and look at your Bantam B trophy from 15 years ago, you look at something like that that's prideful. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of pride in that. So I, I, so I think I, that's a refreshing answer from a, a non-public school coach, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that, but continue. And, and that, that's the truth. Uh, there's... there's <laughs> Uh, we talked about Del Barton last time, and I said it. Until somebody beats Del Barton, they're the best team in the state, right? right? So a lot of what you're saying about us, where teams gear up for us because maybe we're one of the top teams in the state, we've been trying to do that to Del Barton. So I think we know the other side of the coin as well, right? We we, we know what the teams coming in to play us are trying to do because we're still trying to do that to them. Corey, what do you got? Great answer to a, yes. to a question there, Coach. I would have answered that one very similarly. Um, I think. Well, then you must yeah. he, you must be right, Coach Tosco. If that's the way Corey Robinson. <laughs> well, I, I would think he's. I think he hit that one right on the head. Like, I do too. exactly I on the head. <laughs> but uh, I I think um, again, like you just said, when with both teams practicing in the same rink at the same time, you got kids on both teams. To, you know, on on similar travel teams together. I don't think uh, motivation on on your team's part is going to be a problem, and I don't think it's obviously you know going to be on on Ramsey's part either. The question mark that I I think could be perhaps is Ramsey a little tentative at the beginning of the game, and and you know it, it, could that be a problem for them as far as you guys jumping on them early? Maybe they're a little you know got a little jitters early trying to play up to your you know the speed that you're going to play them at. Is that something you're going to? look to do, go right out at them and use your speed because your speed against Bergen the first five or six minutes, you know, that game was pretty much, you know, under control right in the, right right off the bat. Yeah, so, Corb, I, 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 think, I think you're right in a sense. I, I don't think it's so much about, about them coming out timid. I, I don't expect that at all. I expect them to come out um, full force and ready to go. Well, I, not not I, timid, I, just a little jittery, maybe just a little, yeah, you know, no, I, little different. Jittery, right. I, I, I really, the way I look at it is as long as we play our game, then we've got a chance to win. And our game is get pucks deep, get on defense, pressure the puck hard, skate fast. I mean, we clearly don't have the biggest team in the, in the state, but we've got some really fast players with a lot of speed out there. And that's our game, and that's what helps us against, like you said, in, in the Bergen Catholic game. I know we went up uh, a good amount of shots early and kind of set the tone. Of course, that's what we'd like to do against Ramsey, and, and that's kind of the game plan. But uh, how we, how it plays out, you never know, especially after a snow day. You don't know what these uh, high school kids are out doing. <laughs> yeah, Kev, I'm interested to get your take on it because you're an opposing coach in the arena that's seen both teams. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if you – certainly you're welcome to ask Coach Tosco another specific question, but how about just a, a scouting report? Well, I mean, I, I think Coach hit it right on the head. I think Ramsey could compete with uh, that first line with Ramsey. You put them out against anybody in the state, they're, they're right there. Um, and I think Coach also hit it on the head with their depth. I think that's why they give so many teams, no matter what it is, uh, public or private, trouble. Um, and plus, you know, they got a goalie back there that, that is certainly uh, one of the better goaltenders, at least around here. And then, you know, with Don Bosco, obviously they're the same type of team. You know, obviously a lot of speed, a lot of depth. Excellent goalie, good coaching. I think you got two similar teams. You know, I think uh, you're going to see a great game on Thursday night. You know, I, I uh, you know, we talked about it the other night, encouraging people to get out there. I'm glad they moved it to Thursday, and uh, you know, teaching the Ramsey. I know the Ramsey kids, the Ramsey community will be their support, and I can, uh, you know, I'm sure Don Bosco kids will be there in their community. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a great event. And uh, like I said, I think you see two similar teams in style. And, uh, you know, it could obviously go either way. Yeah, Coach Tosco, he sounded a little noncommittal, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> right down the middle, Kev. Perfect. Right, right I, down the middle. I love Bob middle. Toy. I love the Ramsey kids. Coach Tosco is doing a great job. I can't pick a winner. Well done, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a, a true coach right in the middle of the fray, too. But, uh, 
Greg Toscos, the head coach of the Don Bosco Prep Ironman, obviously another great season underway here, and it's going to be fun. NorthJerseySports.com will be in attendance to cover it, and uh, we, this is your second appearance here on It's Hockey Night. We certainly appreciate that, but don't think you're off the hook. we still got half a season to play here. <laughs> oh, thanks, for I appreciate you guys having me on. One of our favorite segments here on It's Hockey Night is our weekly Player of the Week segment, and you know what? This week it was kind of a no-brainer. West Milford went from the number four seed in the Passaic County Tournament to the champion of the Passaic County Tournament, and we welcome in our Player of the Week. He is West Milford senior goalkeeper Ross Mantione. And, Ross, first of all, did I get your name right? Yes, you did, sir. All right, perfect. Second of all, congratulations uh, not only on the illustrious honor that is the Player of the Week on It's Hockey Night, only the fourth one ever handed out. I mean, it, it's right up there with the Academy Awards, we understand that, but also slightly uh, lesser goal of winning the Passaic County Tournament. Congratulations on that as well. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be on. <laughs> hey, guys, do you hear that? It was an honor. It's an honor to be on. <laughs> Now, Ross, let's uh, talk about it real quick. I mean, you know, we had Coach Fry on before the tournament started, and he said even that loss that you guys had to Wayne Hills before the tournament started where you played well, you know, you had officially overcome your bad start to the season, kind of got you going in the right direction. And was was that really the momentum builder that you guys needed to, you know, make a run through the tournament and come out at, at the end with the uh, championship? It certainly was one of the momentum builders. I mean, winning a couple games going into the tournament, just being able to play them close after losing 7 nothing the first time, it definitely helped out. What was the – well, let's talk about the tournament itself then. You, I mean, you get you get past Clifton in the first round. Who would you play in the semifinals? Wayne Hills. Oh, that was Wayne Hills, and then you beat DePaul in the final, right. So, uh, right. yeah, talk about that Wayne Hills upset. They were the number one seed. They were the defending champions. What went right for you guys there? Oh, it was just a great game. Everything seemed to click for us. I mean – we had a couple letdowns, and they ended up scoring two goals off of that. But other than that, we just played, we just had some great performances. I mean, Joe Fenu scoring two goals to keep it 2-2 and send us in overtime, and then Dressel coming up huge in the last, I think, five minutes of the game to win it in overtime. It was great. And also the first guy ever to pronounce Joe, we had him as Joe Fenui when we had him on here on the show. So you're also <laughs> the first guy ever to pronounce his name correctly. There's another honor for you. <laughs> Nobody really knows how to pronounce it. I don't even think he figured it out yet. <laughs> Corey, I turn over a one goalkeeper to another. Have at it. I'm ready to roll. Ross, I had a chance to see the Wayne Hills game a couple of weeks ago. You played them in the regular season, and you lost 5-3. And um, I spoke to Coach Fry after the game, and I told him, I said, you know, it was it was you know, they, they outplayed you a little, but I I thought if you know. You know, we both thought, you know, if Ross played his A game in the county playoffs, if if you got into that matchup and you got through Clifton, that you would have a chance to, uh, coaches sometimes say, go deep into the game with them. And you had a lead, and it definitely was uh, something that uh, worked in your favor when you, once you got into overtime, you, you obviously were playing with confidence. So did, did the um, did you feel like you played your A game in, the, in that 5-3 uh, that loss, or – you, you thought you had a little bit more for, for the, the the county game. To be honest, it, I honestly think it was um, that we played more of a complete game offensively, defensively, and in that I think it was really a team effort. Then it was probably our best performance of the season. Great, great, Maeve? Um, what's what's changed for you guys? You know, you, you had a rough beginning a little bit. Obviously, you got a little bit healthier, got some guys back. Has that been it, or has it been a little bit of both attitude and obviously getting some guys back? You guys are seem to be on a roll here, back to 500. Certainly a team that not too many teams are going to want to play right now, um, now that you're hot here. Um, so just, you know, what, what's changed for you guys here? Well, certainly the getting healthy part was a big contributor into how we are heating up in the race to court stage and conference playoffs and all that, but... Realistically, what seems to be going right is the effort level that this whole team is putting forth. I mean, you see that you would see at the start of the season that the effort level just didn't seem to be there at all aspects of the game, but now it seems to be coming in at every point that every player is buying into what we have to do, and they're doing a great job of doing it, which is 
brought us back to 500, which is a great accomplishment starting at whatever 06 and 1 or something like that that we were at. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's what impressed me most with you guys so far is just seeing you guys at the rink sometimes and seeing your work ethic. I saw you early in the year. I thought it was okay, and now the past couple of games are really – you guys definitely look like, a, like, look like a different team out there. Go ahead, Corp, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I, I was just going to follow up with them the same. So, I mean, obviously the – accomplishment of winning a county championship you know it's, it's a goal you probably set at the beginning of the season now you've you got there but uh, it raises the stakes for you guys a little bit you know now you're looked at as a county champion uh the bad start to the season long behind you you're playing as well as any public school team in north jersey if not the state you know what what's next well, winning the county championship it puts a lot of it gives a, it puts us on a lot of radars for m- multiple teams now. I mean, we'll still be able to win a couple games now from now until the end of the season. But I think we're also going to be able to upset a couple games too that we think that people think may not even go our way. You specifically, Ross, talking about that Super Bowl Sunday matchup with our, our co-host here, uh, the uh, head coach of the Mawa Thunderbirds. I'm absolutely talking about that game. <laughs> Not a lot. Ross, don't worry. Ross, you're allowed to stay home that day. I don't know if Coach Fry told you that. You could sleep in that day, he said. <laughs> yeah, Ross, I, I love it. It's, it's great. I mean, Kevin, you got to find a way past him, and he's as hot as any keeper in, in, uh, in, the, st- in the state well, right now. Look, well, I, well, I wanted to ask him, especially going back to that Wayne Hills game quickly, Ross, you know, obviously the other night, facing 40 or so shots. I mean, how – the goalies, I mean, I have, we had the other goalie on, uh, Indian Hills, wealthy. He says he likes to see a lot of shots. In a big game like that, I mean, do you need a rest? Or, I mean, I know William Hills, they're not going to stop when they get down to the goal. They're going to come right through you, and I'm sure they were doing that. Was How, how focused do you have to be in a game like that? Uh, the, the focus level has to be there. I mean, coming into the season, facing 60 shots a game first two the last two years, I'm ready. I love facing a lot of shots. It's just a goal yeah. thing. I don't know what it is about it, but we just love facing a lot of shots. I mean, facing eight shot, uh, nine shots against Clifton, I mean, I wasn't crazy about it. I would have rather seen a lot more than that. But mm-hmm. coming into Wayne Hills and having the goal of winning that game at all costs, 40 shot, four, making 40 saves is just a big accomplishment for me to win that yeah. game. Yep. Talk about that groove you get into as a goalkeeper, you know, when the shots are coming. Hey, I, I mean, do you, you're always looking for the next one? you want it? Yeah, like usually what, uh, what I've been learning uh, as well, along the way becoming a goaltender is that positioning is the key thing. If you are in your position, the puck will end up hitting you. And for some of the instances on getting sales that night, it, the puck did hit me, and it was it was incredible. I mean, Coach Jordan actually was wondering how I stopped some of the pucks that I stopped, but he – my father actually told him that it's the positioning because if you're in the right position, the puck will find you. Yeah, absolutely. Corey, you got another one for him? Or a um, couple of quickies. Uh, obviously, you, you know, the say County champions, great, you know, great run through the tournament. You really don't have too much to rest on that, though, because you're going to have a Lakeland team coming in this weekend. And if I'm not mistaken, the Lakeland-West Milford rivalry is uh, pretty intense. Speak about that game a little bit. Yeah, it's a great rivalry. I know the Lakeland will be gunning for us a little bit after having that 3 nothing lead against DePaul in the semis in the State County Tournament. So they're going to be hot for a win coming back into getting back into the groove of things. But uh, we usually get probably close to 1,000, 1,500 fans at a game. So the fans get into it, and they help the teams a lot. I mean, you'll, you'll see total momentum shifts just because of what the fans put out there. Ross, final final question. Yeah, we'll be interested. Yeah, but, uh, final, final question before we let you go: How deep is the snow in West Milford? Um, probably <laughs> about five, six inches by now. That's it. Wow. Yeah, I'm nothing, surprised. Nothing that crazy. I mean, I could be totally off. I mean, <laughs> I've had some really poor calculations for the last hey, couple of weeks with the snow. Hey, Just man, keep stopping uh, the puck, getting in front of it, and work on your positioning. <laughs> Don't worry about the snow. Right. We're shoveling until the season's over. A man of pucks, not a man of mathematics in season, <laughs> and I can certainly uh, sympathize with that line of thinking. But Ross Mantione, the senior goalkeeper for the West, uh, the Passaic County champion, West Milford Highlanders, and our player of the week. Thanks for joining us here on Hockey Night. We appreciate it, and you were uh, you were great to talk to here. 
Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Stay warm. Well, that was fun. Ross Mantione, the West Milford goalkeeper, not only good at playing high school hockey, but also good at conducting an interview. Would you agree, Kev? I think I need to take him over to my Mawa um, ice hockey locker room and public speak for some of my guys that aren't too great at that. Um, yes, he was very good. He was very good. And he, I think he called you out a little bit. He did. He did. I told him, though, you know, Coach Fry told him he could stay home uh, for that game. So hopefully uh, hopefully he listens. Yes. All right. Now let's move on, let's move on with the uh, updated rankings here. Our NorthJerseySports.com top ten ice hockey teams in North Jersey area. And, again, here is the disclaimer. The rankings do not necessarily reflect the – I don't know, Kev, what is that absolute disclaimer that they say? The the uh, views of our hosts, it is yes. put together by an elite panel of sports writers from across the North Jersey area uh, the, who we like to keep anonymous, but we certainly will say that in by no means do either of our co-hosts, specifically the co-host who coaches a hockey team in North Jersey, have anything to do with with putting these rankings together. He's just strictly here to comment on the list that we come up with. So let's start with Corey Robinson and number 10, Ridgewood. Uh, uh, Ridgewood's a solid team, no doubt about it. Uh, obviously, I'm sure they're not happy with the result they got in the, in the, the county tournament. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to have a really good second half to their season. And they come in at number 10 this week. Moving up, number 9, Tenafly, Kev. You know, he, Coaches Cal and Penify never disappoints in these, you know, in these county and state games. He gets a big win over Ridgewood uh, in the first round, runs into a buzzsaw in, in Bosco. Um, so, you know, looking to get a season back in, uh, back and up running here in the league, uh, league games, and he'll, it, that team will certainly be uh, be heard in the states as they always are. Number eight, the newly crowned Passaic County champion, West Milford Highlanders, Corey. One of the hottest teams in North Jersey right now. They, um, I think if you would have, uh, you know, when we first started this show, if somebody would have said that we were going to be the state county champions, we probably would have said, uh, we disagreed with that. But, uh, Coach Fry doing a great job over there. His goaltending, his forwards, everybody seems to be contributing and, uh, you know, they come in at a number, number eight, big jump for them. Absolutely. 0-4-1 start to the season, 7-7-1 and in Passaic County champions. Not a bad turnaround for the Highlanders. Moving up a spot, number seven, uh, Kevin. St. Joseph region. Yeah, I, I think, you know, this is, again, one of those quiet teams. You know, Coach Maherd is doing a nice job over there. Um, you know, they they ran into Ramsey. Really, I mean, you know, the shots were obviously a little Ramsey uh, favored, like they always are. But you know what? Two quick goals by Ramsey. They, Joe's only lost 3 nothing. Um, again, you know, they'll get their feet under them back for the league here. I saw they picked up a win against Highlands the other night. So, you know, no setback for that loss versus Ramsey. And, again, you know, we'll see how they do uh, coming in the state, going against uh, some of the bigger boys. Yes. Number six, Corey, Wayne Hills. Obviously probably disappointed after the uh, Passaic County final, but still a solid side. Yeah, no, no doubt a, a very uh, good team. It's going to be interesting to see how they respond to, uh, you know, to the tough loss that they had against West Milford. And, if you know, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they – they're coming up against Ramsey soon. And I think it's uh, actually Friday night. I think they're playing. They all playing Ramsey Friday night. So mm-hmm. that'll be a great way to uh, you know bounce back and see how they you know approach that game. Yes, I mean it could be no matter how the Bergen County tournament turns out. I mean, it might be the right time for Wayne Hills to give them a run because if Ramsey wins, they'll be on you know cloud nine. We'll have to get back to business. And if they lose, there could be some disappointment going in there as well. So that will be an interesting game on Friday. All right, let's move to the top half of the rankings. Corey Paramus. Ke- I'm sorry, Kevin. Paramus Kappa comes in at number five. Yeah, they, you know what? They <clears throat> they got by uh, the you know the first county. Uh, they beat Passac Valley. They got the the matchup that I think they wanted with Bergen. You know, I wanted they Coach Glenn. I'm sure wanted to see how they matched up with Bergen, and, and you know they played them well. They certainly had some chances to uh, see the tire win that game. Goalie for Bergen made some nice saves. There was one right on the goal line. Um, so again, they'll look to rebound here, and, and Paramus Catholic will be just fine. They're they're a solid team. Number four, Corey, Bergen Catholic. The seeds hold. Number four is Bergen Catholic, like we were seated in, they were seated in the uh, county tournament. Um, had a good tournament. No, you know, no, uh, no disappointment. They played Bosco, you know, played a hard game against them. They, they got some great goaltending in that game. And, uh, you know, I think Bergen will continue to 
play consistent hockey and, you know, look for, you know, maybe a possible run in the state tournament for them later on. Absolutely. Number three, Glenn Rock. Maybe. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm going to see, uh, very interested to see how they respond. You know, um, they, they had a, the matchup with, with Ramsey in the semis. Um, pretty much got handled, I would say. You know, I think when they go back and look at that tape, they're going to be a little bit disappointed. But again, you know, they're going to find out a lot about themselves with these league games coming up. I'm sure they're going to save that tape versus Ramsey, hopefully learn from it. And the way they go, they could certainly get their, another shot at Ramsey come uh, state time. So Glenn Ruck is uh, certainly going to be ready. Yes. I think, right. Maven, I think the Maven will take number two here. The Maven uh, back-to-back, <laughs> right. We, we, as if we haven't talked enough about them, one more quick word about the Ramsey Rams, our number two team. Well, I'll be there Thursday, and we'll see how they do. You know, I like I said, I, I think they're really going to be ready for this game. Um, you know, they, they scrimmaged them early on, way early in the year. They did very well. I, I think they got some of the emotion out of that. Um, you know, I think that was very smart on his part to do that. And, uh, hey, listen – all hands on deck on Thursday night, and they're certainly going to be ready. And number one, as we have discussed all night long, Corey, Don Bosco Prep. I think, you know, they're the two-time champion, so until proven otherwise, they are the, they are the best team in North Jersey. Um, they, they really impressed me against Del Barton in, in the uh, loss that they had a couple of weeks ago. So it's going to be a great matchup again, going back to it. But uh, the number one team until proven otherwise is Don Bosco. Absolutely. All right. Well, that concludes this week's edition of the NorthJerseySports.com High School Hockey Top Ten. And it's time for, I know it's really your favorite segment of the show here, as our experts get to show, show off a little bit their professional hockey skills. And believe me, when we do this show, you know, we, we do a little show prep. We talk before we come on the air. I can't get a word in edgewise with Corey talking about the Boston Bruins and Kevin fretting over his beloved uh, New York Rangers here. But let's talk a little uh, NHL grade eights here. And I noticed that other media outlets across the, not only North Jersey, not only the country, but across multiple nations, Corey, are starting to steal our thunder with the grade eights. Um, I'm hearing it on Hockey Night in Canada radio every day. But uh, you know they do right. the their top ten and their Fab Five. They have a lot of things. Yeah. So they're they're obviously listening to our show down here. Yeah, what are they doing about hockey in Canada? Uh, <laughs> not a bad place to be around this time of year. <laughs> All right, now who's going first this week? I think I went last week. Let, let me start with Mr. Robinson. You can go. Go ahead. Fair enough. We're going to change things up a little this week. We're going to go number eight with the Tampa Bay Lightning. They are. A point or two behind the Bruins in in their division, and uh, now if I'm not mistaken, number 91 is not playing for them right now. So for them to be that high and getting those points, we're going to get them at eight. Throwing in a surprise at seven, the Avalanche. I think I mentioned to the Maven the other day about the Avalanche being ranked high on Hockey Night in Canada radio, and I thought it was a crazy thing until I saw them the other day. They got a nice team, and looking at the number of points they have, they're 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 a formidable. Uh, Formidable uh, team, no, no surprise with a goalie behind the bench there. They're making a lot of a lot of progress this year. Number six, we're going to go with the beloved Boston Bruins. They had a nice little stretch, Super Bowl, uh, not Super Bowl, on uh, semifinal Sunday there. They uh, played the Blackhawks, lost in a shootout. They beat the Kings yesterday. So they definitely show they are one of the elite. We'll go with the Bruins at six. We'll keep the, put, keep the Kings ahead of them. We'll put the Kings at five. Um, as the two teams split the last week when they played each other. Team that imp- has impressed me uh, a lot this year, the St. Louis Blues will go with them at four. Maven, what do we got with the Blues Devils tonight? Did the Devils hold on and win that game? Uh, I think you could say hold on, 7-1, Se- yes. Oof, wow, the Devils had seven goals in the game. Yes. We'll keep the Blues there. There must have been some uh, plane troubles getting into Newark or something. But uh, <laughs> the Devils haven't had seven goals in a week, never mind in a game. But uh, we'll uh, we'll keep the Blues four. Like the Pittsburgh Penguins at three, I think right now they, they are a cup team, no doubt about it. They got a good shot to get there. Um, and number two, the Ducks, and number one, the Hawks. Until proven otherwise, that's the one-two combo. Ducks had a chance to beat the Hawks on Friday night, and did not get the job done, so we'll keep it one, two, Hawks, Ducks. Maven, Maven you're, up. you're up. 
Yeah, as they say, great minds do think alike. You know, I was going to squeeze. I, I did have a little uh, the other night on our show. I, did, I was going to say I was going to put my boys at number eight. But you know what? After watching them tonight, sorry, <laughs> guys. Like, I, I like the abs at eight. Um, you know, lightning. I, you know, Corey had the lightning. I, I still got to see more of them. Um, I do like Boston. I got Boston at seven. Very tough, rugged team. Again, another team that I wouldn't want to play uh, come playoffs. I like, uh, even though Mr. Tortorella went berserk the other night, I like the Canucks at six. I don't know if you guys caught that, but that was uh, very interesting. Tortorella in between the uh, the locker rooms going crazy. Um, Pittsburgh, I like at five. I got them at five. I think the four teams from the west in front of them are still slightly better than them. Um, I like the Sharks at four. I like the Blues, even though, like I said, the Blues had a rough loss at the Devils tonight. And then, obviously, the Ducks and the Hawks until, uh, I mean, the Ducks are just amazing. I was looking at their record before. Same with the Hawks. Their home records are just, you know, almost, you know, I had to look twice. So, yeah, it's absurd. Uh, it is. It really is absurd. Um, so just two tough teams there. But uh, but that's it. So we're, so we're relatively close. Like I said, I still got to see more of the Lightning. And I'm waiting for one of these days to hopefully get the Rangers in here in my top eight. <laughs> Well, you're going to have to wipe the dog off a few more times, I think, before the Rangers get into the uh, top eight. But good stuff here on It's Hockey Night, Season 1, Episode 7. And we've done a lot of talking about it, but finally, by the next time we convene here, unless Corey Robinson, Kev, calls us tomorrow with an emergency uh, to, to do another show tomorrow night, we will, get, uh, we will finally see who the Bergen County champion is. Our show next week, we'll probably talk to a coach and a player of the championship team, and we got a lot more stuff. It's going to be fun to see who wins the county championship, but then it's going to be fun to get on with the rest of the season as we move toward cups and state playoffs and everything else like that. So, Kev, good job. Hey, man, have a good night, and uh, everybody drive safe, shovel out, get that snowblower going. <laughs> and and th- I think that was a uh, a direct hit at our other co-host, Corey yeah. Robinson. Now that the show is over, you got no more excuses. Go shovel the driveway. We are going to shovel. 10.30, we're shoveling. <laughs> Follow the leader.